So at this point in Giannis's career, he's the level of a player where you would normally expect for him to have more than one ring at this point. He's truly an all-time great, and he's really gotten it done in the playoffs as we're going to go through. But I kind of want to talk about what has been the issue for the Bucks to only have him at one ring at this point of his career. And especially because one of my biggest frustrations over the years as a Bucks fan is when the Bucks struggle in the playoffs, hearing comments from Bucks fans going hard for the guys that I feel like were a part of the reason the Bucks went out and also hearing a lot of criticism for the guy that shows up. So I just kind of want to go through the multiple reasons. It's not one player, but there are a couple main reasons that aren't necessarily just player based as to why Giannis only has one ring at this time. Now we're going to uh, focus starting on 2018 to 2019, where the Bucks first became contenders when Budenholzer was hired before that they were kind of still developing the talent. Uh, at that point, Jason Kidd was a very flawed head coach um, in terms of being able to take the Bucks over the top. And so the first playoff series they had with Budenholzer uh, as the head coach where they got knocked out was against the Toronto Raptors. And as a Chris Middleton defender supporter, this was the one that I remembered as his one bad playoff series. But even here, you could see he wasn't necessarily the issue. He didn't do as much as you'd want, but he clearly just didn't take that many shots because he shot 38% from three, a little over 41 from, from the field. He's not, it's not like he's holding the Bucks back. He just didn't score that much. He scored 14 a game. But this is where you have the start of, honestly, a pretty simple reason why they were not able to get over the top early in Giannis's run. And that was the fact that they just kept going with Eric Bledsoe. I'm sorry, against a contending team like the Raptors, who went on to win the finals, uh, having a starting point guard that shoots 29 stinking percent from the field and 17 percent from three, it is almost impossible to win the finals and or to win the series. And I just don't understand how the Bucks front office was able to keep him around for so long and wouldn't move on from him. Because I remember after this series, reading Bucks, Bucks fans in the comments talking about trading Chris Middleton because he only put up 14 points a game. And not that Eric Bledsoe never went mentioned, but people were like, oh, Bledsoe and Chris Middleton are the problems. But you could just see directly here, you don't have a chance if your starting point guard is shooting like that. And this also wasn't the first time we saw him fall apart in the playoffs. Don't get me started on the Scary Terry series before this, which a good GM would see that and say, we probably need to make a move on this Eric Bledsoe guy. And then the very next year, we got uh, the 2019 uh, at bubble series where one reason was Giannis got hurt at the end of it, but also you see the same exact thing. Eric Bledsoe, 33% from the field, 21% from three. Nice reminder that Chris Middleton shows up in the playoffs, averaging 26, 6, and 7. But uh, especially when Giannis was not fully healthy by the end of it, you just, there's nothing more, it's nothing deeper than the fact that if you're starting point guard, the guy that's supposed to be your third best player, shoots 33% from the field, 21% from three, you can't win. So really, if they just had a starting point guard that could get you 15 a game and didn't shrink in the playoffs, Giannis would have been able to get over uh, the top in one of these series. Really, the year before that, they were up 2-0 on the Raptors. All they needed was a guy that could hit open shots because the narrative at the time was, oh, we know how to stop Giannis. He shot 45% from the field against the Raptors. That's the wrong one uh, against the Raptors. They found a solution to slow him down. But really, they were able to wall up on Giannis because they were leaving Eric Bledsoe, the starting point guard, wide open. So, the issue wasn't Giannis, that there's a way to stop him. The issue was they had a point guard that couldn't hit threes at 20%. So really the issue just came down to Eric Bledsoe didn't show up in the playoffs. And that's what allowed teams to slow down Giannis the way he did. And then finally, like three years too late, they made a move off of Eric Bledsoe. A great move to go and get Drew Holiday. And they won the finals the first year Drew Holiday was there. And then the very next year, uh, get knocked out in the second round to the Boston Celtics in seven with Chris Milton out. Now, this was the bad luck to go with the good luck from the year before. People will say, the Bucs won the finals because Kyrie got hurt. But you can see right here, it balanced out because the this was the year that fully healthy, the Bucs were winning a ring. They took the Celtics to seven without Chris Milton, their best playoff scorer outside of Giannis for sure, best playoff performer. And this is just something to like remind Bucks fans that were like, oh, we should have traded Chris Middleton, even if that was like a possibility. Drew Holiday showed up in some big defensive moments for sure, but 
36% from the field, 30% from three was terrible in game seven. I'm sorry. He was a bit underwhelming for the Bucks in the playoffs. He really did not show up in big games. And all these Bucks fans that are like, trading Bobby Portis, it's the worst thing you could ever do. How could you even suggest it? He beats his chest all the time. And people yell, Bobby, that's what you need to win. But I'm sorry, what you need to win is a big man that won't shoot below 40% in the playoff series. I feel like I'm insane. Bobby Portis, he's not a bad player by any means. I'm not saying trade him like we, the Bucks need to trade him. But the way some Bucks fans act like Bob, you would think Bobby Portis is like the ultimate playoff performer. He's always there. He's always doing the right things. No, this dude's smacking some rookie player getting kicked out this past year. And there's been plenty of examples of him not showing up in the playoffs. So this year, the example was a injuries. Chris Milton got hurt. And the fact that Drew Holiday couldn't step up offensively. And the fact that I'm sorry, Bucks fans overrate Bobby Portis. He's a good bench scorer. But he has not been as instrumental and as like flawless as a player for the Bucks as Bucks fans like to act. Just because he beats his uh, beats his chest and makes everything about him, I'm sorry. That doesn't mean he's like some perfect role player that you could never let go of. And people like to say, "Oh, you don't play basketball if you think this or that." Well, I played college basketball, and I'm convinced most of the people that think Bobby Portis is like some crazy untouchable guy that could never be criticized. I'm convinced most of them never played basketball because they think he's tough for beating his chest and grabbing rebounds. The rebounds are great, but a lot of that showbutting stuff is kind of clown behavior that needs to get called out and not embraced by Bucks fans. I'm sorry, but that's just me. That's just a little tangent right there. Anyway, this was, um, what series was this? This was uh, last year against the Heat, first round. Giannis didn't play every game. Again, Chris Milton, best performer, 47 from the field, 41 from three, giving 23, six, and six um, on the stat sheet. And then Drew Holiday, again, was a letdown. I'm sorry. The point guards for the Bucks in this run have been a consistent letdown. The difference is Drew Holiday isn't as much of a letdown as Eric Bledsoe. He was good enough to just barely get a finals with him as the third option and Chris Middleton playing out of his mind. But he was a letdown for the Bucs. And I don't know why Bucs fans don't acknowledge that. He was great defensively, but he needed to be better offensively than this. And he wasn't always that great off defensively as he was supposed to be. He was guarding Jimmy Butler, and it wasn't even like, oh, Drew Holiday's playing great defense, but, you know, Jimmy Butler's just... No, there were some times... ISO, Drew Holiday played bad defense on Jimmy. Watch some of those highlights. I remember watching Jimmy Butler turn around mid-range. Drew Holiday wouldn't even get a hand up sometimes. I remember he would like half-heartedly contest it, wouldn't even leave his feet until after the ball had left his hands. Like, Drew Holiday got fried by Jimmy Butler. That's what he's supposed to be there. You're supposed to be able to hang his head on. All right, you know what? He could be a letdown on offense, but he's the best perimeter defender in the NBA. But he didn't do that consistently. He did not do that against Jimmy Butler, and that's why it was smart to move him for Damian Lillard because he was a letdown offensively, 29% from three, and that was one of his better series offensively. And um, and then on the defensive side, Jimmy Butler, he couldn't slow him down from getting 50. He's supposed to be able to uh, be better than that. So I just wanted to, um, you know, we set a little bit of the narratives that have gone on with Bucks fans and with people with the Bucks. And outside of the fact that Giannis got hurt, you also see Bobby Portis. I will acknowledge he showed up fairly well off the bench, ten and eight, not bad. A little underwhelming from three. You should. He's supposed to be a floor spacer, not a guy that shoots below twenty eight percent from three. But all right, you know that's that's fine. I'm not gonna go crazy on him for that one. Uh, this one I will though. Twenty five percent from three, even worse, and the fact that you got ejected. But overall, your best two players are hurt in a series you're going to lose. This one wasn't really anything other than injuries. The other two, it was injuries, but also Drew Holiday didn't step up. Or before, when it, uh, when it was Chris Milton out, Drew Holiday didn't step up. And kind of last year, uh, defensively, Drew Holiday didn't step up either. This one is really just straight-up injuries. Giannis didn't play a game. Damian Lillard was out for a lot of it. Nobody really was a huge letdown other than Bobby getting ejected. Overall, this was just, you took a team to six games that went to the conference finals without your best player and arguably your second best player for a couple games. No team should be expected to win in that situation. This one was just straight up injuries. So overall, the reason that Giannis only has one championship is because of, honestly, just a couple guys that have been consistent letdowns. Mainly it was Eric Bledsoe. They should have had one of those rings in the Eric Bledsoe years. And then the year after they won the championship, Either if Chris Middleton just stayed healthy or Drew Holiday did what he was supposed to do. 
they would have had a championship by now. Giannis probably should have two to three, but letdowns combined with some injuries have made it so. We're sitting here at one. Hopefully, he could get another one this upcoming season. I still do have hope. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and subscribe. Please? Yes, sir.